நம்முடைய தமிழ் மொழி உலகிலேயே மிகவும் தொன்மையான மொழி எந்த தேசத்திடம் இருக்கின்றதோ அந்த தேசத்திடம் பெருமிதம் பொங்க வேண்டுமா கூடாதா சொல்லு செம்மொழி வலையொலி யூடியூப் சேனல் இந்த சேனலின் மூலமாக அந்த வலையொலியின் மூலமாக பல்வேறு தகவல்களை தினந்தோறும் நாங்கள் வழங்கி கொண்டிருக்கக்கூடிய அந்த நிலையில் சிலப்பதிகாரம் என்ற தலைப்பில் ஒவ்வொரு பகுதியாக வழங்கக்கூடிய அந்த தொகுப்பை முழுமையாக கண்டு பார்க்கலாம் The title of this lecture is Myths in Purananuru with regard to the relationship between the Sanskrit tradition and the poems of Purananuru or the other Sangam anthologies what George Hart observes is closer to the truth than what had been claimed earlier by the Sanskritists of Tamil Nadu. This is what George Hart says. Some elements in the poems are clearly of North Indian provenance such as Brahmins, Brahmanical deities Shiva and Vishnu and mentions of the Mahabharata, the Ramayana, the Vedas, the Himalayas, the Buddhist and Jain ideas, especially rebirth. Yet for all this, the basic culture and outlook of the poems are apparently indigenous and only superficially influenced by North Indian ideas. The cultural structure we see in the poems revolving around kings, women and caste must have already been very old in the Tamil area when the Sangam poems were written. The same appears to be true for the poem's literary meters, forms and themes which were clearly taken from the oral literature of the bards and drummers. The majority of the poems seem to owe little to the major traditions of North India. Their meters are utterly unlike Sanskrit meters which are based on number of syllables rather than cumulative quantity and their flow is different. Yet no one who knows the Sanskrit tradition well will find the poems of the Purananuru or the Sangam anthologies alien. alien. They share many significant elements with the northern literature, conventions, figures of speech, and even cultural ideas that cannot be traced to northern sources. I have tried to demonstrate that for the most part these shared elements do not represent borrowings of the northern tradition by the south. Rather, they fall into two classes, those that were present in a pan-South Asian context even before the advent of the Aryans and those that were borrowed by the Sanskrit tradition from the same southern oral tradition that produced Sangam literature. The Sangam poets were well versed in the art of drawing upon the common myths whenever they needed apt similes. Marudan Nahanar desires to praise the Pandya king as the best of the three monarchs of Tamil Nadu. Ongu malai peruvil pambu nyan koli urghanai kondu muayil udatri peruviral amararkki venri zandha karaimidatru annal kamar senni pirainul vilangum urghan pola vendu membatta poondar mara this is what the poem says. You outshine the other two kings. 
just as the third eye upon the forehead of the blue throated god shines alone very near the moon that he bears in his hair he who destroyed the three fortresses by shooting a single arrow from his bow of towering mountain strung with a snake the pandya king is compared to lord shiva's fiery die and the god's great feat of ruining the three fortresses of an asura by using the meru mountain as the bow and the great snake adishesha as the bow string is recalled here in the course of the poem the king is again said to be comparable to the sun for his virility the moon for his compassion and the clouds for his generosity the same pandya king is compared to four different gods by nakirer in a poem full of mythological allusions this is the poem yetru valan uyeriya eri marul avirsadai மாற்றரும் கணிச்சி மணிமிடற்றோனும் கடல் வளர் புரிவளை புறையும் மேனி அடல் வெண் நாஞ்சில் பனை கொடியோனும் மண்ணுரு திருமணி புறையும் மேனி விண்ணுயர் புட்கொடி விரல் வெய்யோனும் மணிமயில் உயரிய மாறா வென்றி பெணிமுக ஊர்தி ஒன் செய்யோனும் ஞாலம் காக்கும் கால முன்பின் தோலா நல்லிசை நால்வருள்ளும் கூற்று ஒத்தியே மாற்றரும் சீற்றம் வலி ஒத்தியே வாலியோனை புகழ் ஒத்தியே எழுனர் அடுநனை முருகு ஒத்தியே முன்னியது முடித்தலின் ஆங்காங்கு அவரவர் ஒத்தலின் யாங்கும் அறியவும் உளவோ நினைக்கே த பாயிட் சேஸ் ப்ரைசிங் த கிங் you are comparable to four gods for four of your qualities the god whose neck is the color of sapphire on whose banner the bull stands for victory whose matted hair spreads like fire whose axe is invincible the god who has a palmyra palm on his banner whose body is white as a conch who attacks with his murderous plow the god who desires victory on whose towering flag stands a bird and who is the color of lovely blue sapphire the god who is radiant who rides a peacock who is unconquerable and whose banner sports a deep blue peacock you are like the god of death in your anger that cannot be opposed you are like the white god in your force you are like the god who kills those that scorn him in your fame you are like murhan in doing the deed you embark upon avair chooses the most appropriate mythological simile in her praise of adiyaman who got with great difficulty from a difficult to reach nelli tree in a crevice on a mountain a fruit which was believed to bless one with a long life and gave it to avayar valambadu vai vaal endi ஒன்னார் களம்பட கடந்த கடல்தொடி தடக்கை ஆறுகளி நரவின் அதியர் கோமான் போரடு திருவின் பொலந்தார் அஞ்சி பால்புரை பிறைநுதல் பொலிந்த சென்னி நீலமணி மிடற்று ஒருவன் போல மண்ணுக பெரும நீயே தொல்நிலை பெருமலை விடரகத்து அருமிசை கொண்ட சிறு இலை நெல்லி தீங்கணி குறியாது ஆதல் நின்னகத்து அடக்கி சாதல் நீங்க எமக்கு ஈத்தனை ஈந்தனையே மே யூ லிவ் லாங் லைக் த 
blue throated incomparable one on whose head the crescent moon shines you obtained the sweet fruit from the lily plant with its tiny leaves which had to be plucked from a crevice on the summit of a mountain ancient and difficult to climb you didn't tell me about its miraculous powers and you rescued me from death by giving me that fruit for this act of his adiyaman deserves to be compared with lord shiva who had the poison that came out of the sea of milk in order to save the world and to help the gods secure the life giving amrit an episode from the ramayana is humorously presented by moon podi pasungudayar to describe the ridiculous behavior of his relatives when they got precious jewels as gifts from the king ilanjet chenni here is a poem ilambadu vulanda en irumber okkal viral seri marabin sevi todakkunarum sevi todar marabina viral serikkinarum araikka amai marabina midatru yaakkunarum கடுந்தரல் ராமனுடன் புனர் சீதையை வலித்தொகை அரக்கன் வவ்விய ஞான்றை நிலம் சேர் மதரணி கண்ட குரங்கின் செம்முக பெருங்களை இழை பொலிந்தாங்கு அரா அருணகை இனிது பெற்றிகுமே இருங்களை தலைமை எய்தி அரும்படர் எவ்வம் உழந்த தன் தலையே த லார்ஜ் குரூப் ஆஃப் my poverty stricken relatives the poet says put the ornaments meant for the fingers on their ears and those meant for the ears on their fingers those meant for the neck around their waist it was like the time when a huge gathering of monkeys their mouths gaping open took up the beautiful ornaments that had fallen on the ground the day the demon ravana carried away sita this episode as detailed here is not to be found in valmiki's ramayana the puram poet would have got it from the folklore of ancient tamil nadu some lesser known myths also find a place in purananuru anangudai avunar kanangundu velithana sein vilangu serappin nyayiru kaanadu irul kan kedutha parudi nyalathu idumbai kol paruvaral thira kadundiral anjana uruvan tandu niruthaangu arasu ilandirunda allar kaalai murasu elundu irangum mutramudu கரை பொருது இறங்கு புனல் தெரிதறு மிகு பெரும் காவிரி மல்லல் நல் நாட்டு அல்லல் தீர வென் த ட்ரபிள் சம் அசுராஸ் ஹேட் கேதர்ட் டு கெதர் அண்ட் ஹிடன் அவே த சன் அண்ட் ஹியூமன் ஐஸ் வர் டேமேஜ்டு பை த டார்க்னஸ் ஹீ ஹூ இஸ் ஆஸ் டார்க் அஸ் கொலீரியம் ரீக்ளைம்ட் இட் புட் இட் இன் இட்ஸ் பிளேஸ் and saved the world your father acquired a reputation by doing the same for the chola king valavan who had won many victories but was not now worried about the loss of his kingdom he said the king's white umbrella of power resembling the moon in its place again and alleviated the suffering sufferings of the fertile land where the great kaviri flows during the fight between the asuras and gods the latter won in the day the farmer at night the asuras therefore took away the sun and hid it behind a mountain but krishna managed to get it back 
the moon like umbrella of the chola king is compared to the sun while malayaman who went to the rescue of the king is compared to kannan who saved the gods by getting back the sun in a poem muranjiyur mudinaganar hails udiyan seraladan as the one who fed the two armies led by the five pandavas on the one side and the hundred kauravas on the other alangulai puravi aivarodu sinai nilandalai konda polambun thumbai ir aimbadin marum porudu kalathu oliya perinjotru migubadam varayadu koduthoi this is the tribute paid to the king you gave plenty of food of the finest rice without stinting till the end of the war in which the hundred wearing their flower garlands of golden thumbai and had captured the land perished fighting against the five whose horses were waving whose horses wore waving plumes this belief that the ancient tamil kings were contemporaneous with the heroes of the mahabharata and that the two huge armies were fed by udiyan jayaraladan is mentioned in a few more classical tamil texts mudiyar peniya udiyam seral perinjoru kodutha nyanrai this is aganaanur perinjoru payanda thirunduvel tadakai this is selapadigaram or aivar ir aimbadinmar udanru elunda poril perinjoru potradu than alitha seran this is also selapadigaram there are a few poems in puranaanuru which symbolize death as a mythical god called kootram atta kulisi alil alal payandang aliyardami aarga enna aranil kootram tiranindru thuniya uulin uruppa erikiya magalir vaalai poovin vaalai muri sidara muduvai okkal parisilar iranga kalli pogiya kalariyam parandalai velvel vidalai sendru maindanane angadu noyindraah death bold and shameless as a taken life without making any distinctions without any concern for the poor who are to be fed now the women beat their breasts in grief and fragments of their broken bangles are scattered like plant and flowers the birds who come here along with their relatives hoping to get their gifts are grief stricken the hero who wielded his sharp spear is gone to the burial ground may death be cursed let not death suffer from any disease here as in other poems death is personified as a mythical god who takes away human lives death is called a being without compassion by kutuvan kiranar while mourning the demise of ai andiran he says aadinadai puraviyum kalirum therum vaadai aanar naadum oorum paadunarkku aruga ai andiran kodeend alhul kurundodi magalirodu kaalan ennum kanneli uippa ai andiran who gave as gifts horses elephants territories and cities with unlimited income ceaselessly to singers has gone to the world of the gods along with his women with their tiny bangles and lovely ways death who has no mercy 
has uh, taken them away. Kamban, who came later, asked in a relevant context, Kutingan Kanmayim Uladana Kardal Ahumo. Is it right to think that Kutru will have any mercy? Death is cursed by a woman who has lost her husband in a jungle and feels utterly helpless. One burner paints a tragic scene of a heart-rending event. This is a poem. Ayoyanin yan puli anjuvale anaitanan goline agalmarbu edukka vallen yen bol peru vidirpu urha ninna innadu utra aranil kootre nirai valai mun kai patri varai nilal sergam nadatti sin siride the lady says the one who has lost her husband in the jungle if I cry loudly, I fear the tigers may attack us. I can't lift you up because I cannot hold your huge chest. May unjust death, who caused you pain, be afflicted with as much sorrow as I am. Take my bangled hand and walk a little, little while so that we may reach the shadow of the mountain. Death is presented as a poverty-stricken farmer by Arisil Kadar. He says, Noi urand vaihiya ulahinum Miha nani nii yadandhanaye aranil kootram Vardhalin varum vayal valan ariyan Veer hoodi uravan vittu undang, Uruvan aruir unai ayin, Nerar paluir parhi, Arguvai mano, Avan amar adgalate. Death, you have no virtues, you have lost much more than the world which is plunged into grief. Just as a farmer whose family has fallen upon evil days, ignores the good of the fields, the source of life, and eats his own seeds, you have eaten up this man. Otherwise, you would have grown fat, eating his many enemies killed on the battlefield. To express their grief at the death of a patron, these poets find numerous ways of condemning death itself. Such poems are found to be all the more profound and meaningful when they are compared with some of the celebrated poems on death by the leading Western poets. Dunn, for example, John Dunn, has been praised to the skies for this sonnet on death. This is the sonnet. Death be not proud, though some have called thee mighty and dreadful. For thou art not so. For those whom thou thinkest thou dost to overthrow, die not, poor death, nor yet canst thou kill me from rest and sleep, which but thy pictures be much pleasure. Then from thee much more must flow. And soonest our best men with thee do go, rest of their bones and souls delivery. Thou art slave to fate, chance, kings and desperate men, and dust with poison, war and sickness dwell. And poppy, our charms can make us sleep as well, and better than thy stroke. Why swellest thou then? One short sleep past, we wake eternally, and the death shall be no more. Death, thou shalt die. Dunn here gives expression to some of the Christian beliefs about death and afterlife. 
the poet subscribes to the belief that the death of Christ on the cross has freed mankind from the fear of death and that after death our souls will sleep till they awake on the day of judgment. It is said that Dunn reflected upon the problem of what happens to the soul at death and came to the conclusion that the souls of the righteous are admitted to God's presence at the moment of death rather than having to wait till the day of judgment. The seventh line of the present poem says that the best men die young or that the best men are most willing to part with their lives. It is to be noted that the Puram poems dealing with the death do not give expression to any unconfirmed pure, purely speculative views on the end of man and what happens to him later. Masatana's poem, Mourning the Death of Kili Valavan, apostrophizes death and tells him how foolish he had been in ending the life of the king. Nani pedaye nayanil kutram virahinmayin vittattu undanai innum kaanguvai nanvai aagudal ondru vaal maravarum kalirum maavum kurudi amguru punalbhuru kalattu oliya naalum aala aanan kadandu attu endrum nin vaadubasi arindhiya vasaidhir aatral ninnor anna ponniyal perumboon valavan ennum vandu moosu kanni enayor kondanai aayin ini yaar mattru nin pasi theerpore death you showering showing no mercy have made a fool of yourself since you had no grain you have cooked and eaten up the seeds you will find out how true this is you have taken valavan the one who was just like you in his daily slaughter on the battlefield where he killed a number of horses elephants and men with shining swords and fed you every day now who would appease your hunger the poet condemns the god of death for putting an end to the life of valavan but praises the king for his large scale annihilation as a warrior king during his life 